Congratulations, you landed the job interview. Now you need to make sure that you're prepared for the most challenging questions they can throw your way. So this video is specifically for you. I have picked out the top six most difficult questions that you might see in 2017. So stay tuned for that right now. Hey, 1% Nation, I'm Jake Voorhees, and you are watching The 1% Engineer Show, where we empower young engineers to rise to the top 1% of their career. And if this is your first time here, guys, make sure you subscribe, because I release videos three or four times a week for engineering student success. And if you want the 1% Engineer Kit, which is a bunch of eBooks and resume templates, comment below and I'll send you a copy. Lots of students freak out about job interviews, most notably the questions that you will receive. So I made this to compile some of the most difficult ones so you can be ready. Let's jump right into question number one. What is your biggest weakness? Be careful with this one, guys, because it is a trap. Lots of students mess this one up and give the wrong type of answer and it may immediately disqualify you for the job, so be careful. This question is much less about what you say but how you respond to this question. It's what they call an onion question. It has layers to it and just like an onion, guys, if you mess this one up, it will make you cry. <laughs> First, really quickly, let's talk about ways not to answer this. Historically, students believe that they can joke about something like, oh, my biggest weakness is chocolate cake. Or they may be in denial, like, oh, I don't have any weaknesses. I've worked on those long ago. Using a strength as a weakness, like, my biggest weakness is I work too hard. <laughs> no. Don't do that. In order to answer this question properly, much like most other responses in this video, it actually starts well before you even walk in. You have to plan for questions like this. And you actually have to be honest here, guys. You have to think internally, be self-aware, deep down, look at yourself and figure out what your true personal weaknesses are. Everybody has things that they're working on. Everybody can improve at something, guys. And you should be working on these things on a day-to-day -day basis to be a better person, to be a better professional, a better friend, a better family member. And this is the type of stuff you need to talk about in response to this question. You wanna pick a quality that isn't going to disqualify you from the interview, nothing too crazy, and something that you're able to work on. So hypothetically, let's say that you wanna choose public speaking. This is something that all of us should be working on. So what you wanna do is tell a story about how public speaking has been a challenge for me in the past. I used to get super nervous in classes in university. And then this is what they're really looking for, guys. This is the layer to the onion. You wanna talk about what you are doing in your life right now to work on that, to get better, to improve, to invest in personal development so that you can be the best career person for this company. That's what they wanna hear. They wanna hear your admission to a true weakness, your awareness of that weakness, and your ability to work on it right now, what you're doing to make yourself better right now. They don't care about the weakness, they don't care about what you're saying, they care about your response to this. Are you humble? Are you self-aware? And are you ambitious enough to work on yourself, to invest in yourself, to create that personal development, personal growth, professional development in this sense because you're talking to an employer, but that's what they wanna hear, guys. So you have to plan ahead, be self-aware, and construct something that actually makes you look good because you're working on it, than some sort of stupid response like chocolate cake. Two, why should we hire you? This is a tough one if you're not ready. What this question really means is why are you the best candidate for this position? And you need to cater your response specifically for this role, specifically for this company. And what they're looking for is what type of specific skills or experience or talents do you have that will actually solve the problem for this company. So you should cater your response specifically to the role that you're interviewing for and what type of need you're gonna fill, what type of problems you're gonna solve, how will you use your skill sets, your experience, your backgrounds in university to actually come into this role and kill it and do well and create more efficiencies for this company and produce value for this team. If you're interviewing for a design position, talk about how your experience in the past, whether that be at university or in internships, is a perfect match for this position and that your skill sets fit the need, can solve the problem that this company is looking for. Keep it concise, short and sweet, and customize this response to that company. Question number three, how do you work under pressure? Do you do well with deadlines? This is another trap, guys. Every engineering company has deadlines, has to deploy time management and prioritization throughout the day. So you need to be really careful in how you respond to this question because they're probing at your time management, they're probing at your productivity skills, your workload skills. So you need to be ready for this one in advance so you don't choke. 
<coughs> what you should say is something like, when I plan my tasks, when I plan my month, when I plan my calendar, I look at the deadlines, I look at the targets, the goals, for a project, for an assignment, and you plan backwards, you reverse backwards. If something is due on November 1st, what you wanna do is you say, okay, by the last week in October, we need to be here. Midweek in October, we need to be here. By week two, we need to be here, which creates a Gantt chart-like schedule in your brain and in your calendar, and allows you to have checkpoints along the way, so you make sure that you're hitting your targets. You also wanna mention that you work well under pressure, that you've done so before, you've always hit your deadlines in the past, and you're not intimidated by that environment because again, guys, every company has deadlines. Every company is gonna have pressure in some instances, so they need to make sure that you're not afraid of that, that you're not going to crumble and hurt the team and overall hurt the company. You should also mention how you use time management skills, calendar blocking, planning grids, to-do lists, reminder things, stuff like this. Question number four, tell me one time that you had to deal with a difficult person. Again, be careful guys, this is a trap. It's a trap! It's a trap! He's about to fall into the trap. What this interviewer is looking for is turf war situations in your past. They're vetting you out to see if you're gonna be a troublesome employee because everybody has to work on a team and you don't wanna put yourself out on that limb. You don't wanna make yourself vulnerable by saying anything wrong here. The best way to respond to this question is to have a pre-rehearsed story ready about a time when you had to deal with a tough group member, when you had to deal with a tough coworker at your internships. And even if you don't have a good literal experience to call from, you should make up a story and rehearse it so many times that it actually feels like it's a part of your memory, that it feels like it actually happens so that when you answer this question, you're just ready to rock and you're not nervous. So let's use an example of a situation like this. Say you had a group member who wasn't pulling their weight in an engineering class in college, or say you had a team member during an internship that was a little cumbersome to work with, and this is an opportunity for you to show some leadership skills here and talk about how it went on and you had to pull this person to the side and have a little conversation about it. You had to speak to them one-on-one, -on -one. you understand their needs, you listen to them and deal with the situation. And you can talk about how you explain to them that they're letting other people down and that this person is better than that. You know that they're capable of more and how you dealt with the situation in a decent fashion. They're looking for your conflict resolution abilities, your communication abilities, your leadership abilities, and overall, they're forecasting your ability to deal with future challenging situations in their workplace. And just to elaborate even more, the reason why I use the example of somebody who's a lazy group member is because that one's a little bit more common for students or young professionals. For other types of professionals, you could have to deal with somebody who's just a butthead in the office or somebody who has bad habits or something. But in all of these situations, generally what it requires is for a leader type person to pull that other individual to the side, have a conversation and face this issue head to head with that challenging person and deal with it with leadership skills. That's what they're looking for. How can you deal with challenging situations in their workplace? Number five, what salary do you think you deserve? Again, this video is filled with trap questions. The salary one is an age old negotiation tactic where the person who mentions salary first, who actually mentions a number, they lose. So you don't want that to be you. And I fell into this trap myself personally this year when I accepted a new job. And we don't have to go into too much about that, but I started researching how to deal with the situation better in the future. And this is what it is. Whether this question comes up after the interview on the phone or even during the interview, you don't ever wanna say the salary that you're looking for or the salary that you have today. Because what they're trying to do is for you to mention a number and for them to gauge that and then basically either match it or go just below it. So it's the employer's biggest fear that they mention a number first and you would have taken something that's like $10,000 lower and they lose big time. So if they can understand your expectations for the position, they're in the driver's seat and that is not what you want. So what you say is, well, you guys have this potential job role. You have a list of skills and experiences that you require for it. So you must have some sort of salary range in mind and then they're probably gonna play that one off and then you can pretty much repeat the same thing, that you're not willing to mention the salary that you expect, you're not willing to mention the salary that you have now, that they basically should disclose the salary that they're offering for this role, because they're the company. They have a salary in mind for this specific role, and that's why you just keep playing. There's an industry match salary for the role that they have created, and they have something that they can put on the table eventually if you play hardball. And that's what you have to do here. Do not say a salary that you want. Do not say a salary that you have previously. Don't do it. You'll win in the end, because ultimately they have to mention something. So don't worry too much. Don't overthink this one. You don't actually have
have to respond. But don't be like me and actually give some number out. And if you are gonna give some number, make sure it's so high that's well above industry average. So if they actually respond to that and give you an offer based on that number, you're in the winning position. Question number six, this is a community request by David Plotnick. This is another reason why you guys should join the 1% Engineer Society, get in the Facebook group, join the email list so we can develop a relationship. And sometimes your questions will end up in these episodes. So thank you for this request, David. And that is, why do you wanna work for this company? This is a really good question. And in the Facebook group, it was kind of brushed around lightly, but the reality is, is a culture question. They're trying to make sure that you fit their culture as a company. So it's very important that you respond to this properly. You should deploy some progressivism, some millennial thinking for this one and talk about the fact that people don't work for a company because of what they do, but why they do it. Why does your company exist? What is its cause? What are your beliefs? What is your purpose? What is your meaning? What are you guys trying to do? What type of positive impact are you trying to have in the world as a company, as an organization? And what you should do is talk about how your personal culture, your personal value, your belief system, your pillars of character align with that company so that you will feel good about coming to work, so that you will be with that company for more than just one year and then leave. You will feel excited about working on the projects, being on the team. You will feel fulfilled about the occupation that you will have and the work that you do day in and day out because that's one thing that makes people leave an organization. That's one thing that crushes productivity. If you don't like your job, if you don't believe in the mantra, the purpose, the cause, the goals, the beliefs, the meaning, the reason why this organization exists if you aren't aligned with that, you're not gonna be happy. So that's what they're looking for with this question, guys. Why do you fit our company? How do you align with the views of our organization? I hope these six questions helped you guys. Comment below and let me know what other interview questions you would like me to respond to in the comments. If you notice on my videos, I respond to every single comment, guys. So if you have other questions that you're curious about, definitely let me know. And if you've been enjoying this show, guys, consider subscribing because I release videos at least three times per week for engineering student success. Thanks for watching the 1% Engineer Show, guys, and stay hungry on your quest to become a 1% Engineer. Cheers!